Hi, everyone. Welcome to week 10 of Advanced Econometrics. This week, we are talking about the mixed logit model. So last week, we talked about generalized extreme value models, kind of uh, jumped back into the world of uh, discrete choice models instead of, instead of estimation methods. And this week, we're going to continue along that path by talking about the, the mixed logit model, which is going to be kind of the, the most flexible and general uh, discrete choice model that we talk about in this course. So this week, we're going to talk about just an overview of that model, talk about the choice probabilities that come out of that model. Then we're going to talk about some different ways to kind of think about this model, either as having random coefficients or some flexible substitution patterns. Then we'll talk about how to use the mixed logit model with panel data, talk about some other empirical considerations. Each of those will be, be one video this week. And then in class, we're going to talk about uh, an example in R of estimating a mixed logit model. And this week's reading comes from uh, the train textbook again, chapter six. So take a look at that, read through that before you watch these videos uh, so you can get uh, his treatment of the material and then I'll uh, hit the highlights in these videos. So let's start with just a broad overview here. And let's start the overview by looking at the kinds of discrete choice models that we've already talked about in this class. So the first one we talked about was the logit model. Uh, this model required a strong assumption that our unobserved components of utility, those epsilons are IID. And the reason we made this strong assumption was that it generated simple closed form expressions for choice probabilities that made estimation very easy, relatively easy. Uh, but some downsides of this model, other than that the, the those assumptions created uh, uh, some pretty uh, rigid substitution patterns. We still have the fact that preference variation could only be represented by observed data. You know, we, we talked about how we could think about marginal utility of income being a function of income, but we couldn't allow for just variation in marginal utility of income for unobserved reasons. And then also we talked about how panel data applications are limited because of that IID assumption that it's kind of difficult uh, or unreasonable to assume that, that people's choices over time aren't going to be correlated with one another. Then we talked about the nested logit model as part of last week's uh, discussion of generalized extreme value models. Uh, in this case, we allowed for some correlation between unobserved components of utility that we modeled. We could group group alternatives into nests to allow for correlations. And it kind of added some flexibility to our uh, representation of substitution patterns, but things were still, still pretty rigid compared to kind of a fully flexible model that we might think about wanting to estimate. This gave us some choice probabilities that are more complex, but still closed form, but it still has some of those problems of the logit model that preference variation can only be represented by observed data and that panel data applications are limited by an IID assumption. The assumption's a little weaker than it was for logit, but we still have to assume that, that observations across individuals and for the same individual over time are gonna be IID. And so it's usually unreasonable to assume that someone's just making independent choices over multiple time periods. But what if we want to allow for a richer representation of preference variation and fully flexible substitution patterns and an ability to use panel data, then we wanna use the mixed logit model, which is what we're talking about this week. And so the basic idea of the mixed logit, logit model at kind of a very high level is that it's gonna overcome kind of the three big limitations of the logit model and really the nested logit and other uh, generalized extreme value models as well. We're gonna allow for unobserved, or we can think of it as random preference variation we're gonna talk about all of these in lots of detail this week in, in their own video, in fact. So we can think about random or unobserved preference variation, kind of highly flexible or unrestricted substitution patterns amongst our alternatives. And then also correlations and unobserved factors over time that's gonna allow for better applications with panel data. So what's the catch? We're getting all these great properties from the mixed logit model, what's the catch? Well, it turns out that mixed logit choice probabilities are not closed form. And so estimation of these models are gonna require numerical simulation. And we're gonna talk about all of these details in, in, in much more, uh, in greater length as we go through all of this week's material. But still just thinking about a high level, how does the mixed logit model achieve this level of flexibility? 
And the answer is that it does not use a set of fixed coefficients for the entire population. So the mixed logit model is not just going to have some betas. Uh, you know, in our previous models, especially when we had linear representative utility, we thought of representative utility as just being a linear function of betas and data, and that those betas were kind of common parameters that applied to everyone in the population. But what the mixed logit model is going to do is assume that there's not just a single fixed common coefficient for the entire population, but rather there's going to be a distribution of coefficients throughout the population. So we're going to say not that everyone shares a beta parameter, but that that uh, our beta coefficient, but that that beta coefficient can vary throughout the population for unobserved reasons. And we're going to model a distribution of those coefficients. And these distributions of coefficients overcome those three main limitations of the logit and nested logit models. Uh, it's going to allow uh, these, we're going to model these distributions, uh, or these, these distributions of coefficients are going to essentially model distributions of unobserved preferences among the sample of decision makers. So you can think about this as allowing for marginal utility or whatever our structural parameters represent. This is going to allow those. Uh, those kind of concepts to vary throughout the population for unobserved reasons. It's also going to impose some additional correlations in unobserved utility among alternatives that will allow for more flexible substitution patterns. And we even got out of our, our generalized extreme value models. And then it's also going to allow for essentially representation of individual preferences over time. And if you have those individual preferences that are constant over time kind of baked into your model, it's going to allow for better use with the with panel data. So that's really at the very high level what this model is going to do. In the next video, we're going to just jump right into talking about choice probabilities, um, the, 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 the choice probabilities of this model, and then talk about some different ways that we can think about getting to those choice probabilities.